Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Laura and here we talk about mental health, lifestyle and today's topic which is minimalism. So let's get into it. Today I am filming a classic minimalism video and we'll be taking you through 25 things that I no longer own. A lot of these videos are longer and they're like 30, 40, 50 things, but what I'm going to do is today's video and then follow up with 25 things that I no longer buy. The distinction there being that today's video is some of those bigger items that we tend to own and keep for a while. And then the next video will be things that you tend to buy, more like consumables. So that's how I'm dividing it up. So if you like today's video, please subscribe to see the next one and I'll see you for that. Okay, let's get into it. Strapless bras. I used to have a nude and a black strapless bra. And to be honest, I can't even remember what I used to wear with them. But I realized after a few years that I really preferred either wearing things that I could just wear like my normal t-shirt bra with or things that I could wear no bra with. I'm not like the biggest gal so I can get away with it in certain outfits if it's either like drapey enough or structured enough. And after a while I realized that there was really no point in me hanging on to them. They were not that comfortable. I didn't really need them and I just decided to forego them. So I no longer own strapless bras and in turn, I no longer own clothes that require me to wear a strapless bra. Non-cotton underwear. This might be one of those TMI ones, but um, especially for us people of the female persuasion, um, everything down there is really like an ecosystem that just needs to breathe. And so I realized that I would always feel more comfortable um, throughout the day if I was wearing cotton underwear and the research on this is pretty good as well so a while back I decided that I could still have some like prettier underwear but the main part of it needed to be cotton I've been like that for years now and have no regrets handbags now I do have a handbag you guys would have seen me wearing it in videos it's actually one of those cool like fanny pack bum bag things that I wear over my shoulder and I've actually got a backup kind of one of those which was the one I was wearing previously and what I realized filming this video was that I don't even think I need that one I was planning to kind of rotate I don't think I am though but both of those bags are less like the carrying handbag or like the big bag on your side. And they're both kind of like little day bags, you know? So I really feel that having one, maybe two of those where you can have your essential items for you ready to go out to the supermarket, whatever. And then when I go to work, I have my work backpack and I put that in there. But I just have not found the need to have like a big bulky full on handbag type situation. Multiple phone cases. So I have my one phone case that I got when I got a new phone two years ago and I have just stuck with that. I really don't feel the need to kind of switch them over like their accessories or whatever. I'd much rather just find a case that I know that I really like that sticks with my style. It is pink-ish. It's maybe getting a little discolored so I might replace it soon but again when I do I will just stick with the one. I don't need to have multiples. Duplicate frying pan slash skillet slash wok. So this didn't used to be the case. I used to have a few and all of them were cheap. -er. So a couple of years ago, I had a wok, a large fry pan and a small frying pan. And then for, I think it was for my engagement. I don't think it was for the wedding. I think it was engagement. My aunt got me this really awesome German brand of like large hefty fry pan and she was so excited to give this to me because she has one and just loves it and honestly I got this thing I started cooking with it cleaning it down is just such a breeze and I was like I do not need these others I had for a while wanted to just like invest in one but I hadn't got around to it so now that we have this I was very happy to let go of all of my others and this is the one pan that we use multiple perfumes I do technically have two perfumes, but one of these is my like home weekend, hanging out with friends, 
scent and the other is the one that I wear to work. And this was when I first started working full time, like four and a half years ago is when I bought both of these. Now, obviously we had COVID in that time, so I was not wearing either of these. <laughs> for like months at a time, which is why they've lasted so long. But I was really happy to get both of those. Um, the work one was cheaper than the home one, which is nice because then that more expensive one has lasted longer. But I'm really happy just having these two. And then when one of these runs out, I will replace that. And I just go between these depending on whether it's a work or like a personal situation. And that works really well for me. Extra linens. A few years ago, we decided to upgrade some of our bedding and get a few different sets of pretty colored duvets. So we have a yellow set, a gray set, and a white set. And the way that I store these is that everything is inside one of the pillowcases. So you'll have all the other pillowcases, the duvet cover, a top sheet, a fitted sheet, and it just fits in there. So we literally have three sets and no extras. Um, I do have a couple that I keep with a couple of pillows for when people stay over with our spare foam mattresses, which also double as sound insulation in our spare room because my husband is a musician. <laughs> so that helps to soak up the sound. But whenever we get rid of those spare mattresses, probably when we move, I will also get rid of the double ups. And for our personal use, we just have those three sets. Excess kitchen utensils. This is one where it's very much like the container uh, determines the volume that you can have. So we have a pretty compact kitchen. I know that some people have smaller, but for like a modern kitchen, it's pretty small. That means that we have one set of drawers. So the top is our like eating cutlery. Uh, the third draw down is like baking paper, our reusable baking sheets, um, paper towels, and then the bottom drawer is where we keep the tea towels and our like dog medications, etc. So that leaves the second drawer for all of our other kitchen utensils. So it has to fit in here. I can't have it overflowing. So whatever we have fits in this drawer. And that's meant that we've kept pretty minimal on stuff. Like I see the really cute, like copper measuring cups, but I know it will take up extra room. So I just have these plastic ones that stack. That is what I have. We have a few other extra things in there, but if it doesn't fit in the drawer, it's not coming home with us. T-shirts, shirts, or jumpers that aren't cotton or wool. So I figured out, well, oh, it took a few years, but what I realized was that whenever I was wearing synthetic materials, like as my top, I have a couple of coats that are synthetic, but anything close, oh, sorry, microphone, <laughs> anything close to my skin needs to be natural materials. Um, I really wish I could be one of those people who could just like go for a run, come home, but just chuck on clean clothes, go out, all good. My husband's one of those, I am not. I get stinky. So I need to make sure that throughout the day I'm wearing breathable materials. So it has to be cotton or wool and that just leaves me feeling so much happier and fresher, shall we say. So cotton and wool only. Hooded jumpers. Okay, I'm not like a hoodie person anyway. You know, I'm not gonna walk around with my hood up looking real cool off to the skate park, whatever it is that the kids do these days. I see a lot of them skating. Anyway, I have never really been one to find hoodies comfortable. And whenever I would get them, like when I was at university where we would have like class hoodies for that year or whatever, I would just get really, really annoyed by the hood and it would be so bulky. And then if I tried to layer like with a coat, I then have this hood that's either like stuck underneath, making me look like the hunchback of Notre Dame or hanging out over the back of my coat. And I just realized that like, for practicality purposes, I did not like hoodies. So I will not get something if it's a hoodie. Even if I like all the rest of it, if it's got a hood, it's a no-go. Color correcting makeup. Okay, so I was so one of those people who had the little palette with the green and the purple and the yellow and I'd be like painting it on under my concealer and foundation. And I was like, look how much better I look. And what I realized was that like we all have 
natural differences in pigmentation in our face, right? It gives our face depth and expression and all of that. And so I decided a few years ago that I really didn't need to be trying to cover all of that up, you know? I still use a little bit of like natural concealer under my eyes, but I go for much lighter makeup now and I really don't feel the need to do the whole color correcting situation. An eyelash curler. So I never really had one of these, but I would always use my friends ones whenever we were like getting ready for stuff together. And I kept thinking, oh my gosh, I should get one. This would be so great. Like it would just look so much better. And then I realized that firstly, I would never remember to use it properly. Like I would always put on my mascara and then try and use it. And apparently that breaks them. So then I just wouldn't end up using it right and i and i thought through this and i just went you know what this is not something for me i do not need this it's unnecessary a proper wallet so i had like a proper big full wallet where you could keep all your cards and your cash and your receipts and everything and i would just find it really impractical it was too big to fit in my bags that I was using or too big to like just carry with me or whatever. And what I ended up doing was going for one of those like little almost card holders. And what I have in that is my driver's license, my personal credit card, just use it for the reward points, our joint card. And then in the middle I have like my personal bank card, usually like 20 to $30 in cash and that's it. That's all I carry with me in my wallet in this tiny little thing and it's great. And I'm so much happier with that than trying to carry everything around because you do not need most of it. Multiple swimsuits. So I only have one swimsuit and this was not even an expensive one. I just got this a few years ago from Cotton On. Yeah, um, it's a really pretty blue color. I really, really like it. It is a little bit tight on me at the moment, but it is in winter, so I'm not wearing it as much, but I'm really happy just having one swimsuit. It's just one more thing that I don't need to think about as to, do I wear this one or do I wear that one? Or does this look better? Or do I wanna cover my stomach today because I ate a burger yesterday or whatever kind of silly thoughts I have pop into my head. I just go, nah, I like this one. I know I like it. I'm gonna wear this one done. So one swimsuit suits me fine. I'm very happy with that. A little black dress. Now I used to have a really cute little black dress that I actually wore to my 21st birthday party, but I realized after a few years that I was hanging on to this thing. Yes, it was real cute, but I never wore it. I'm not really like a dress in black kind of person. I know I'm wearing dark gray today, but this is like the darkest colored thing I own now. I just was not wearing it. I wasn't choosing to wear it. I would always choose other stuff. And so although for some people that's like the essential formal or going out or party wear is a little black dress, it's just not for me. Extra hangers. I used to have these extra hangers in my closet because I kept thinking that I would need to put more stuff on them. And I realized after a while, I was like, all my clothes are hanging in the closet. Why are there these extra hangers here? You do not need these. And if you do, you probably want to get new ones because these were like the really crummy plastic ones that were just hanging around. So I took those, got rid of them, and it's a lot easier for me to just get to things in my closet now a tumble dryer and all associated products. So a tumble dryer, clothes dryer, the one that looks just like a washing machine, but you shove stuff in it, it spins it round, it gets warm, it dries stuff. One of those, we do not have one of those. This is partly because we have <laughs> a tiny bathroom. So like you step in, behind the door is the washing machine, in the next corner is the shower, and there is a gap of like this big between them. Yeah, about that big. And then next to that is the sink and everything. And then next to that is where we have our clothes basket. And then in the middle, you have a space that's kind of that big to stand. So we have almost no room in our bathroom. We did not need to try fit another appliance in there and either stack it on top of the washing machine or try attach it to the wall or whatever. So we just decided to stick without it. We occasionally take like sheets or towels to a laundromat just down the road which is actually really cost effective. And it forces us to be a bit more onto it in terms of when we wash our clothes to make sure that they have time to air dry. And that has been so much better for us. But also tumble dryers in New Zealand generally are not vented to the outdoors. And we struggle with humidity as it is anyway. So a tumble dryer, if it's not vented outside, 
just puts all that moisture from the clothes into your house. And we also really didn't need that. Our windows only open this far. It's tough enough trying to keep the place like warm and dry and healthy and all of that. A tumble dryer was actually just gonna make the situation worse. So we are foregoing that. Expensive headphones. Now I used to look at all the name brand stuff and be like, this would be great. This would be comfortable. Over the last few years when I've purchased the really expensive headphones, it hasn't been a great experience for me. And when I decided I wanted to go for like the proper in-ear ones where they're just, you know, like this big little ones that sit in your ears, I decided to go with the Chinese brand Xiaomi because they had really good reviews. It was a hundred bucks. I didn't know if I wanted to carry on using these. For context in New Zealand, I think AirPods are like 300 plus. Everything's expensive here in New Zealand, especially electronics. But anyway, I got these for a hundred dollars like 18 months ago and they have been awesome and they are so great. And I do not need to go to the expensive brands because there's always gonna be trade-offs. There is gonna work differently there's very few things that you can say are actually fundamentally like better they're just different so if you find something that works well for you even if it's a cheaper brand just do that I'm happy with my cheap headphones excess hair styling products now this is either electrical hair styling products or like things that you put in your hair to style them. So I do have dry shampoo and I really enjoy that because as someone who has a lot of hair, it can be really, really hard to get your hair clean all the time. And I feel like having dry shampoo just helps to tide me over between washes. I'm happy with it. I also have a mini straightener. It's like teeny and tiny. I got this second hand four years ago. I can use this to straighten or curl my hair, which I do occasionally and I really like that. And then on a day-to-day -day kind of styling basis, if I feel like it, I have this putty that I bought from my hairdresser. I've had this little one for over a year and I use that to style my hair. I also have a can of hairspray that I will use if I'm doing performances and by performances that is music performances i've also done a couple of gigs as an mc and so i do my hair sort of curled and voluminous for that but even with that it's just my little straightener maybe some of the um putty and then hairspray and we're good a tablet so i have my work laptop i have my phone and that is it. I mean, I also have my Kindle, but <laughs> when I was in uni, I used to have my laptop and then also my tablet because that was a lot easier to take in and do notes on. But what I've realized now is that the work that I do, because a lot of it is heftier stuff, a tablet just isn't going to be sufficient. So I just make it work with a computer and a phone and those are my options. And I think that that ends up meaning that there's honestly less frustration rather than trying to do certain things on a tablet, but you actually need more functionality, all of that. I just stick with the laptop and phone that I have. An up-to-date phone. So I said earlier in this video that I bought my phone two years ago. That is true. But when I bought it, I bought the 2020 iPhone SE. And that was in 2021 that I bought it. So at the time I bought the lowest spec iPhone that I could. And that was basically because my old one had just got to the point where it was unusable. So it was a 6S, I believe. And that was two years ago. Some of you might be like, oh my God, I can't believe you made it last that long. And others might be going, I still have my 6S and it's great. <laughs> But anyway, at the time, um, I knew that I like and trust the Apple operating system. My laptop is not Apple though, I will have you know. But I knew that I wanted that, but I really didn't need like six cameras on the back of the phone and all of that. So I got the most basic one and I've been really happy with that choice. One task kitchen appliances. So again, similar to the kitchen utensils, we just don't have that much room in our kitchen. So I've had to be quite strict with myself on not having single use appliances. The small appliances that we do have, some of these are technically single use, but like a water kettle, I don't think you can really have a go at that because you boil water for lots of things. We have a toaster, we have a blender, 
a food processor, a air fryer. Oh, and we have a rice cooker. Technically the rice cooker is single use, but I am really bad at cooking rice. You know, everything else, like a sandwich press, you can just use a fry pan. A pasta machine, you can just use a rolling pin. A bread maker, I make my bread by hand. A stand mixer, I make my bread by hand. <laughs> I just keep going back to all the stuff that I just do with my hands, which I know I'm lucky because I have young hands that are fairly strong, don't have arthritis, so I am definitely not knocking anyone who has single use appliances for that kind of stuff. But personally, I don't need them, I don't have room for them, so I try keep them to a minimum. Extra towels. So similar to the bed sheets, I realized that we just had extras of these that were not really getting used, were not necessary, and were just making our fairly small bedroom and wardrobe situation feel even more cluttered. So we went through, we kept the towels that we need for Bailey, our beach towels. We have one each to use and one each spare, so two each of our main towels. We have a couple of bath mats, a couple of hand towels. Oh, and Josh has his like face towels that he uses. But other than that, we got rid of all of the others and it just feels so much less cluttered. Uncomfortable shoes. Now I was that gal who, when I hit 18 and I was allowed to go out and spend money on what I wanted, I was getting the cute heeled shoes with like the the like strappy lace things over the top with the toe peeking out and then like the wedges with the strappy things and the zip -bit -bit -bit. I did it. <laughs> I took painkillers to wear shoes. Okay, I was there. I was doing that. I was pretending that I didn't have wide-ish feet. And now at the ripe old age of 27, I've realized that I deserve to have shoes that are actually comfortable and that it is possible and that you should say no to shoes that are not comfortable. So I have running shoes that are well suited to my feet. I spent up on getting white sneakers to wear to work and honestly I am mostly wearing those and I think I might get rid of some of my other work shoes. But again, with those, I made sure that they were comfy and I was not gonna put myself through having my feet squashed by these shoes. Even the heels I have are super comfortable. My wedding heels, dude, I still have those. They are awesome. I will continue to wear those because they are so comfortable. So don't sentence yourself to a life of uncomfortable shoes, right? I even, oh, I don't know if y'all saw, my antiquing video like a month ago but I went and I got these glare up slippers glare up if you want to sponsor me I'm right here I will tell people how awesome these are these are like felted wool I wear them all the time I keep trying to leave the house in them accidentally because they're so comfy so anyway uncomfortable shoes don't go there don't do it you deserve better than that. Alrighty, so that is the video for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below if you think there's anything that I missed, if you think there's anything that you disagree with, or any other questions or comments. So if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and stick around and I will see you all next week. Thanks guys, take care, bye.